again You are Lord and servant You're the Son of Man You're the Lion of Judah You are the risen Lamb You're the second Adam It is
world's on you And I'm safe with you I'm gonna make it through Let's sing that again you guys something yes you do not have worse hat hair than me <laughs> today okay but you know what we are a church that welcomes you as you are i hope you're wearing your jammies i hope you haven't put on makeup i hope you are looking yes amazing, amazing. today i'm gonna put the hat here, back on coming here looking like that and we still love you yeah hopefully i, I still have a job <laughs> so we'll see hair. but oh man listen it's a casual church come as you are that's yes. right no that's a good that's hey. a good that's a good illustration that's Thank what i was Jesus. going for it Thank wasn't you, because Jesus. i didn't shower today <laughs> Hey, we love you guys. We got some announcements for you. Yes. Announcements. Yes. So, so glad to have you here. Yes. I'm Deanna. This is Noah. Yeah, what's up? And uh, especially if you're new with us, we have a challenge for you. It's called the yes. three-point challenge. Um, do you want to tell them about yeah, that? Yeah, so or? we want you guys to pray and ask God if this is the place for you to be to continue to grow in your spiritual journey. Yeah. And so we want you to check us out three times and see if this is where God's calling you to. It's really simple. And we just want to encourage you to do that and yeah. really pray and see if this is your place, yeah, if, if these are your people, God if call you bad home. hat hair is where you want to be, if you feel in that, or you know, yes, if you feel in that, let us know. And you can actually tell us on uh, thepointchurch.net slash connect. Yes. It's a connection card there for you. And on that same spot, there's a section there for prayer requests. And we really love to be able mm -hmm. to pray with you over yeah. your needs. Um, if you feel comfortable, go ahead and share that there as well. Yes. Now, we also have Focus on the Fort this month. Um, usually, we partner with an organization here locally to just serve that mm -hmm. organization. Uh, this month is going to be bring your friend to Easter. Yes. To Easter for the Easter fourth. Easter is so, an awesome time. Yes. Uh, we remember just some amazing things about what Jesus has done yeah. for us. Yeah. And while Easter egg hunting is a lot of fun, guys, this is the reason for the season. Yeah, so we absolutely. want you to invite someone, get them to understand yeah. uh, what God did for us, yeah. what what he sacrificed for yes. us. Yes. And then we can celebrate that yes. too. And so yes. join us, invite Please. someone, invite yes. some, invite multiples, yes. everyone. People are just waiting to be asked. Yes. And so just uh, consider that the focus on the fort this month. It's going to be coming awesome. in person. What do they need to do? So, uh, yes, thank you. Yeah. That's great. Yes. Yeah. So um, uh, hit up the, uh, the pointchurch.net slash Easter. Mm -hmm. And uh, 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 there's tickets. There's like uh, tickets available yes. there. We'll put the link down below.
below for you. We got seven services. Yes. Two on that Saturday, April, April 16th. 16th. Yes. yes. And, and then, then four on April 17th. Yes, yes. Six, uh, six awesome. services. That's six. Okay. Six we, services. I'm not good at math. Hey, okay. bad hair and bad math problems. I did. I'm not. Hey, you know, I'm not a statistician it's here. Fine, it's I'm a fine. pastor. We're so. fine there. We're fine. <laughs> so, anywho, we'll put the, ta- the times down below for you. Now, the tickets yes. are free. Free, yes. free, 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 free. It's free, just free. a way for us to be able to communicate with you and prepare uh, for those Easter services. That will be awesome. Yeah, and hey, we ask that you make sure to just get the tickets you need because we want everyone to be able to have a yes. seat. And if you get too many tickets, then we won't have, we'll have you know, not seats for people yes. who could sit there if you hadn't got So 100%. we want to see you there. It's going to be awesome. Yes. Easter also, is, it's is my, I like it better than it's Christmas. It's like the Super Bowl Sunday of, Chris, of, of Christendom. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Christendom. yeah, that would be a good way to say that. <laughs> so also uh, be sure if you're looking to get baptized and yes. you're local with us, go ahead and hit up that connection card as April well. 10th. April 10th is our next baptism. It's going to be awesome as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you want to pray a song? I would love to. Go I'm going to take my hat off to pray. Okay, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, we just want to thank you for today. We thank you for every single person here, God. Lord, I just ask that what Ray has to say, what the message has to say in this worship, God, that it would touch their heart, Lord, that it would teach them something about you. Yeah. God, that they would continue to grow in their faith, that we continue to pursue you, God. And we're just so appreciative yes. that they came here today, that they came to this place. They came to this video today. Yeah. And so, Lord, we just ask that you would impact them and work in them today. Your wonderful and powerful name, God. Amen. Amen. You need three components to cause an explosion. Fuel, a spark, and containment. If you only have fuel and a spark, you'll get a fire, but you won't get a blast. It's containment that causes the bang, the explosion. And containment is exactly what we've all experienced throughout this past two years of COVID lockdowns. So what happened, right? Our country started blowing up. Remember the riots? Communities started blowing up. Marriages started blowing up. Families were having explosions. And you know what else we had? Some people's faith blew up. They lost their faith. Maybe your faith took some blows. If that's you, you picked a great day to tune into the point because today we're going to look at how to deal with doubt. You know, before we dive into the scriptures, let me just give you a quick primer on doubt. There's two types of doubt. First, there's intellectual doubt. Like some people struggle to believe something because they can't wrap their mind around it, right? The second type of doubt, though, is circumstantial doubt. They doubt because God didn't come through in their minds in the way they thought he should. Like, I prayed on Monday and God didn't deliver on Tuesday, right? Now, just like there's two types of doubt, there are also two ways humans deal with doubt. Some of us idolize doubt. We boast, I'll never believe, right? You're never going to convince me. By the way, if that's you, I want you to know that your doubt is not a sign that you're wrong. It's a sign that you're thinking, and thinking is good. You know, the great apostle Paul told the people of Rome, and in Romans 12 too, be transformed, he said, by the renewal of your mind, not the removal of your mind. It's okay to have a mind, and it's very smart to think through your doubts. In fact, if you got some intellectual doubt, I suggest you read The Problem of God by Mark Clark. Or if you believe in God, but you're not sure about Jesus, read his new book, The Problem of Jesus. Now, the second way that humans deal with doubt is by demonizing it. Like, doubt is something from the pit of hell and that no real Christian could ever doubt. That's baloney. You know, 2022 is my 40th year of pastoring, and I've had doubts every decade. Doubt, it's not demonic. It's normal. The largest book in the Bible, the book of Psalms, has 150 chapters in it, and 40% of them, like 60 chapters, are filled with David's heart-rendering doubts. Where are you, God? He says, what are you doing? I prayed. Why haven't you answered? Like, the postal service is faster delivery than you, God. Come on. Listen, don't idolize doubt. Don't demonize doubt. Instead, learn from the guy that literally has Jesus on his resume. You, you probably heard of him, John the Baptist. Jesus said in Matthew eleven eleven, I tell you the truth of all who have ever lived, none is greater than John the Baptist. That's quite the reference. Wouldn't you like that on your resume? Jesus said that John the Baptist is the greatest to have ever lived at that time in history. And yet, the greatest guy who ever lived is having a bout with doubt. He's in prison, 
and from prison, John hears the news about what Jesus is doing, the miracles, the preaching. This is Matthew eleven two. 2. When John was in prison, he heard about the things Christ had done, so he sent his disciples. Now, these are John's disciples, not Jesus's. He sent them to ask Jesus, are you the one who's coming, or should we look for someone else? Friends, that phrase, are you the one? That's doubt. John the Baptist, the greatest who have ever lived up to this point in human history, was struggling with both intellectual and circumstantial doubt. Intellectually, John believed that a Messiah was coming, but intellectually, he wasn't sure if Jesus was the one. Circumstantially, he's in prison, and he shouldn't be. So Jesus answered John's disciples, go back, tell John what you hear and see. Blind people see again. Lame people are walking. Those with skin diseases are made clean. Deaf people hear again. Dead people are brought back to life, and poor people hear the good news. And the Colts finally have a quarterback. No, <laughs> And here's the line from Jesus that, that helps us see that he understood John the Baptist was struggling with doubt. Jesus says, go tell John that whoever does lose his faith in me is indeed blessed. Friends, underline this in your mind. Here's the big truth for today. Everyone deals with doubt. And if you're dealing with doubt today, you can learn three truths from the tough times that John the Baptist faced. The first of which is this. Good people, they face tough times. John's a good guy. He's the greatest good guy. So how? How does the greatest good guy end up in prison? Well, let me give you the background. There's 39 books in the Old Testament, 27 in the New Testament. And in between the Old and the New, there's 400 years. 400 years of absolute silence. Malachi finished the Old Testament period, and there was nothing until a second cousin of Jesus by the name of John is born. And this guy, he, he like never went to kindergarten. He just sneaks off into the wilderness for 30 years and lives like some wild outdoorsman Bass Pro guy that like owns Sportsman's Warehouse. And then he just turns up back in culture, back in society, dressed in camel skin clothes. And he's eating locust and wild honey. I mean, he'd fit right into the whole organic farm to table scene. He's like right out of Whole Foods, right? And John just shows up and he starts preaching a one-word sermon. Now, you might like a one-word sermon because it sounds like a short one, but he says the one word over and over again. What's the word? Repent! 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 And he draws massive crowds to hear him in a short period of time. He's trending on Twitter. He's got thousands of followers on Insta. He's number one in search on Google. People love him. I mean, he baptizes everything that moves. It's like his name, John the Baptist. You get near him, you better bring a swimsuit because you're going to get wet, right? In fact, the Jewish historian Josephus records more history about John the Baptist than he does about Jesus. John, man, he just got the headlines, and people loved it when John looked at the Jewish religious leaders, those elitists, and called them a brood of vipers, a bunch of snakes. I mean, the crowd went crazy. He was just fantastic. I mean, if you went to hear John preach, you either got repented or you got roasted, right? That's how he ended up in prison. In fact, let me give you the tea. One time John's preaching, he sees a king, and the king had a reputation for like sleeping around with other women and his family. So John calls him out on it. It says, repent. This is Mark chapter 6, verse 18. John had been telling Herod, it's against God's law for you to marry your brother's wife. But the king divorced his wife and married her anyways, and guess what? The king's new wife did not like John calling them out on their adultery, so she pressured the king to have John tossed in prison. This is Matthew 14, 3. Herod had arrested John, put him in chains, and sent him to prison to placate Herodias, his brother's Philip's wife. Now, his wife. Now, here's the best person in the world, according to Jesus, and he's now in prison. So, yes, good people, all good people, are going to face tough times. So if you're a real good person, like, and you're thinking, look, I tune into the Point Church all the time. I listen to Ray. I fill out the notes on my outline. I give. I tithe. I don't even do 10%. I do 11%. I'm wild. Right? I volunteer, right? I do everything I should. Surely God should be on my side. But then something bad happens to you, like it happened to John. And what you might want to do is read about all the other good people in the Bible. Like, uh, there's a list of them in Hebrews 11. It's like the Hall of Faith, right? This is the chapter in the Bible that lists all people with great faith, right? Noah, Moses, Abraham, great faith leaders. And in this listing, God says, this is verse 32, What more shall I say? 
I don't have time to tell about Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jethiah and about David and Samuel and the prophets who through faith conquered kingdoms and escaped the edge of the sword. Look at that phrase. They escaped the edge of the sword. Here's some perspective. It says there's one group that escaped the edge of the sword. That's great. Nobody wants to die of a sword. But here's verse 37, same chapter. There were others, it says, who were sawed in two. They were killed by the sword. What? They had the same faith. Enough faith to be referenced in the hall of faith here in Hebrews 11. But despite their faith, they didn't escape. They got cut in two. Let me ask you, how can you have the same faith that somebody else has and get get a different result? I mean, how could two groups of people have the same faith and one escapes the sword and the other gets cut in two? I, I don't know about you, but... I don't want to be on the cut and two team. <laughs> I want to be on the escapee team, right? <laughs> I want my story to be about the guy running at me, you know, like with a sword over Jefferson Point, an angel jumped in, broke the sword, a mall cop took the guy away in handcuffs. That's what I want to be telling my friends, right? I don't want to be the guy that the mortician has to sew back together to avoid a closed coffin. Listen, this is crucial for us to grasp. What God is telling us is that our faith can be the same as the guy next to us. But catch this. Even though it is the same, we can have a different result. God can save us from a problem, through a problem, or by a problem, and we all want to be saved from it. But sometimes God takes you through the problem, and sometimes when you're going through the problem, it ends your life, promotes your right to heaven. We want the escape, but faith is not about us getting our will done. It's about accepting God's will. Are you with me? All right, here's the second thing we can learn from tough times here in John's story. Verse 2 says, when John, who was in prison, heard about the deeds of the Messiah, he sent his disciples to ask him, are you the one who's to come or should we expect someone else? Look, John's in a tough place, prison. And here's what you need to know. Tough times raise real questions. John's having the blues. He's depressed. You ever had the blues? Think about it. John, he he was a wild outdoors guy. He loved wide open spaces. He lived out in the open. Like if he were living in Indiana here with us, he wouldn't be living downtown. He'd be living up at Pokagon, right? He'd be living out in the sticks, in the woods. And now he's in prison. He's suddenly confined. And this isn't like some club fed prison, like where Martha Stewart did time. No, this was a dungeon. No restrooms, no amenities, just a hole in the ground. If you didn't get executed, you'd probably die of disease. Like he was all shut in. You know, the reality is some of you are in similar situations right now. You may not be physically confined, like you still got a place to live, but spiritually, emotionally, you're feeling crushed. You're feeling confined. And John felt that. Think about the peaks and the valleys of his life. Here's a peak. One day he was baptizing people in the Jordan River and he looks down the line of people wanting to get baptized and there's Jesus. (laughs) This is John 1, 29. John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John was pumped. Like he sees Jesus and he's tweeting it and retweeting it and liking himself. But but now he's in prison. And he's asking, are are you the one? (laughs) Do you see what's happened? Circumstances have happened. Circumstances have changed. He's not standing in the Jordan now. He's sitting in a dungeon. And now he's got doubts. So John asked his disciples to look into whether Jesus is really legit. Because Jesus wasn't doing what John expected him to do. Jesus was kind of going out to a bunch of parties. Friends, you got to read the scriptures with your eyes open. Religious people back in Jesus' day, they hated Jesus. Why? Because Jesus hung out with the wrong crowd. Right? He was always at the clubs, at the parties. He was always where the sinners were. So the religious people, they freaked out, right? I mean, one day, Jesus, he's, he's not going to Samaria. Jews didn't go to Samaria. And he talks to this woman at the well. It's kind of like the Starbucks of the day. No Jew would have ever done that, but Jesus did. So it's not strange that John's got doubts about Jesus. See, while John's story, it's in the New Testament, his ministry style was Old Testament. He was last of the Old Testament prophets. Style-wise, John would point at you, tell you that you were wrong, and if you repented, he'd dunk you in the river. That's the way it went. So John was thinking that Israel was going to be restored as the leading nation. But Jesus, he was like, well, I'm not about a country. I'm about a kingdom. Jesus was more like, hey, John, thank you for preparing the way for me. Now I need you to get out the way so I can do my thing. That's the real message of Christianity, friends. God does not come into your life so your will can be done. God comes into your life so his will can be done. 
Again, John was thinking, come on, Jesus, get the soldiers, get the horses, get the swords. Let's go beat some Romans up, right? And Jesus was like, I'm not here to kill Romans. I'm here to be killed, to die for the sins of the world. John didn't grasp it. I mean, really, nobody back then did. I mean, Jesus is preaching in the synagogue in Nazareth in Luke chapter 4, verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is on me, he says. He sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and to be setting the oppressed free. And of course, John's got to be thinking, okay, what about me? I'm in prison. I'm not set free. This was hard on John. This wondering led to worrying. This disappointment led to doubt. I mean, this is just human nature. Dr. Vance Havner, the, the great revival preacher from the Blue Ridge Mountains, said, Here is a man who rebuked kings and called religious people snakes. But now he's down in the dumps, just like you and I. Friends, it's one thing to stand in the Jordan and give it. It's another thing to sit in jail and take it. Tough times provoke real questions. I'm sure John wondered, where is God in all this? Why did God let this happen? I'm sure he thought his obedience would bring a better reward. Listen, church, you got to know, it's okay to have questions. We're real people. We're not robots. When Elizabeth Elliot's husband was killed by the very tribe he was trying to reach with the gospel, she said, faith does not eliminate questions, but faith knows where to take them. Here's the third truth we can learn from John's tough times. John's disciples, they go up to Jesus and they ask, are you the one? And in verse 4, Jesus replied, Go back, report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the good news is proclaimed to the poor. But not a Roman is defeated. I mean, there's no war, there's no bad news, just healings and lots of good news. This is truth number three. Real questions build deep faith. You can see it here in the line, which is Jesus' response to John's doubt. Jesus, he, he wraps up by telling John's disciples, Blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me. You know, blessed in the Greek means happy. Does not stumble in the Greek is the word scandalon. It's where we get our word scandalized from. And Jesus is saying, happy is the one who is not scandalized by me. That I do stuff that is left or right of what you think I should do. Blessed is the one who accepts my will as it is, not as you want it to be. Jesus is telling John, look, I know you're in prison. I know you've got a different plan for my life. But I didn't come to be the Jesus that you wanted me to be. You know, Marilyn Manson, Depeche Mode, Johnny Cash, they all sing about a personal Jesus. But listen, we can't make Jesus into our own personal image. You see, some of us, we don't want a Jesus. We want a butler. We want a James. Hi, James, can you help me? James, get me a cup of tea, please. I mean, that's not Jesus. Jesus is not your butler. He's your God. He's the one calling the shots. And his shots, they might offend you. Seriously, if you read the Bible, you will be offended. Jesus will offend your Indiana viewpoints. He'll offend your sexuality, your politics, your left or right leanings. And if you read about Jesus, I'm telling you, get ready to be offended and get ready to be instructed. Because it's not Jesus that needs to change. You do. Your faith needs to grow to move to his will, for he will not bend to yours. And like John in prison, there is no promise of a life of pleasure. Jesus said in John 16, 33, in this world, you will have trouble. You know, one of the founding members here at The Point, he knows all about this kind of trouble. Kyle was a teenager when we started here at The Point, but now he's in his 30s, and unfortunately, he's losing his wife to cancer. They have three little kids, kids that need their mom. But Kyle's wife, she's dying. She's an incredibly strong believer in Christ. Her testimony is solid, but the whole situation is tragic. She's still alive right now, but there are no medical treatments left to give her. She's likely to die soon. And Kyle, who's a key business leader at a large firm in D.C., he's going to have three kids to raise on his own. For Kyle, it's mental torture. He knows, like the great theologian C.S. Lewis said, death, it's like an amputation. You just know something should be there. And Kyle knows. And he knows that there's no use asking why, God. Because he'll never know. He just has to ask what? What can I do, God? What can I learn from this, God? And here's a reality. Good people go through tough times. But tough times raise what? Real questions. And real questions do what? They develop a what? a deep faith in our lives. Friends, I wish, I wish, I wish that life was all about escaping the sword. But many times it's about what? It's about enduring the sword.
Are you with me? Let's pray. Hey, Lord Jesus, we thank you, thank you, thank you for this word today and for what it means in our lives. And I pray for God's people like, like those in Ukraine that are escaping right now. Lord, we rejoice with them. But Lord, for people that are enduring, they're enduring the pain, they're, they're enduring persecution, they're, they're enduring suffering. Lord, give them faith in the midst of any arising doubt. Help them to push through. And we pray that in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hey, friends, thanks for being here. We got one more incredible message in this series called Faith Keepers. I can't wait uh, to share it with you next week. Here's Deanna with the details. Amen. Thank you so much, Ray. And I just want to encourage you, if you have just connected with Jesus for the very first time, I just want to say a big congratulations to you. I'm really, really proud of you. And I don't know if you're feeling some feelings right now. You're not really sure what to do next. We do want to know uh, the decision that you made. So make sure that you put that in the chat box if you feel comfortable or let us know on the connection card as well. We do have some resources that we can give you just to help you start your journey. Now, uh, as we continue through this sermon series, it's been awesome, awesome, awesome so far. Be sure that you're also following uh, our Instagram, our YouTube, and our Facebook. We do post all of our content on there so that you can always like share or re-watch, just kind of revisit things. So um, just a reminder to go ahead and follow, 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 turn on the notification things and all of that. You know what to do. You've been there, done that. Also, uh, for those of you who are brand new with us today, just hold on with me for one second because I want to circle back to you. But um, for those of you who are new, I want to make sure that you know that what we do here on this online platform, this is all for you, 100% for you. I hope that you've enjoyed it. I hope that you leave here encouraged today. And it's because of our, uh, our faithful givers who uh, week in, week out, give out of faith that God would help our church help people find and follow Jesus. So I want to give a big thank you to those folks who have just really decided to partner with The Point Church through their giving. Now, if you want to join them, if you also want to partner with The Point Church, uh, you can do that a few ways. You can do it from our website, thepointchurch.net slash give. You can give online through there. And then also through the text to give option at the number below both ways we'll get it done for you and then of course in service uh, all three services that we have here we give on just on the way out the door 5335 bass road fort wayne indiana 46808 so if you're local here and you want to show up at 9 10 15 or 11 30 feel free we rock it out every single sunday now again if you are new with us no pressure okay i'm saying you hear what i'm saying no pressure there we just want to make sure that we love on you today, that you leave here feeling encouraged. All of this is for you. And again, if you are new with us, please tell us so that we can get you your free gift, so that we can connect with you, answer any questions that you might have along the way. We love being available to you for anything that you need. Again, make sure you're following all the likable and followable places. I'll see you guys next week. Love you so much. 